Ladies and gentlemen, what you are about to see is the inside of where I lived for three months and two days on the Barge Dragon, going from New York to Florida and then to the Bahamas. There's my sleeping bag that got wet in the rain today. These are all wet clothes because I left this window, that window right there, with the lighthouses on it, open while I was looking for land, which I never did find. Genius. And I got everything wet. And and uh, this is this is it, folks. This is it. What do you want to see close up of? You want to see close up of my mitten? That's my which kitchen. Which is really a purple sock that I lost the other one in a storm somewhere about 500 miles ago. Or do you want to see what's going to be for dinner? Dinner? Right here is dinner. Believe it or not, that's dinner. You want to see? Look at my hands. They're a mess. I've had oil and grease on my hands for the last 30 days almost. And I've had it with the oil and grease part. The flashlight, no more juice. Batteries are dead. All four sets of other batteries are dead. Ah, my water glass with my iced tea, gone. Must have fell down from a wave. Got all my gloves and everything wet. Yep. This is my peanuts. This is all I got left of peanuts. This is peanuts compared to what I started with. Here's my fresh water supply. That's it. After that, we drink fresh water out of this thing. Right there. This thing ain't focusing. Out of that. Because, but that tastes like metal. So you have to put iced tea in it, and sugar, and cocoa mix, otherwise it just tastes like a rusty old thing. There's the light of the law there, that's the only thing that's been working nice. For the, I don't know, it's five days now and it's still full of fuel. I think it's being refueled subconsciously by something else. And that's it. This is my emergency gear right there. I hope, if I get into that, that means that I, <laughs> I, I have had it and I'm swimming for sure. Those gloves there, those are the wet gloves. We throw the wet gloves on for wet gloves, gloves full of fuel, until we could do wash. Today would be a good day to do wash, it's raining out. Now the sun's coming out. I don't think it knows what it wants to do either. Well, I will leave you now. You've now had 12 minutes of refueling, which is more than enough. Anyone? is less than 200 feet. Now I am here once again today, December 29th, probably going to be here till after New Year's the way things look, waiting for the weather to clear. All I can say is the weather in Virginia and North Carolina sucks for 10 days now, except for three hours, two afternoons ago, it has been raining, foggy, or so cloudy you couldn't see 500 feet. I can't believe this. And here I am again, under advisement from the United States Coast Guard to stay put. Because this is as close as they can figure where I am. is at the mouth of the Pamlico Sound by Cape Lookout. And they'd like me to stay here because we have severe weather warnings, gale force winds, hurricane possibilities tonight. And if I can't get out of here, they want to know about where I am so that they can come and save me again. And believe me, I will need saving according to that weather report. There's my gang box once again, all mushed up. I fixed it twice. I'm not fixing it no more. Apparently that's where it wants to live. Because it's been through three storms and ended up in that same exact situation three times. My life raft? Hope I don't need that damn thing because 50 years it lasted. And now it's nothing but a bunch of snotted up, busted up old ropes. With no bottom. I made it look like it has a bottom by tying it with two pieces of line. Because the Coast Guard wants me to have a life raft on board. And, uh, and I have to agree with them. This is the type of place you need a life raft. Now, underneath this plank is a very interesting thing. It's called a hole. <clears throat> Probably not going to be able to see it. Yeah, you can see it. Well, right there it is the same thing as right there. That's a metal strap. Now, there used to be a metal strap underneath that piece of plywood, but now it's no longer there. It's over here. Now, in order for that metal strap to get from here, here, right here, right here, to there, right there, that's a good 11 feet away, and it's underneath two pieces of steel I-beams that are joined with a 
cross member that are, have at least 3,000 pounds of weight on them at the time that that got bounced around. Now that metal strap broke out from underneath there, and then that piece of steel with all the weight on it of the bucket and lumber and poles that I had on the barge that disappeared in the storm, and part of the weight of the welder from the being tied down. That big, that big, that big I beam, this I beam right here, boom, right there. That connected to that with that cross member there, bounced up and down on the deck enough to get that piece of strap underneath there, and it bounced right underneath there. So that means it had to bounce at least 12 and a half inches high from wave power, my friends. That's the kind of stuff that I was out in, and that's what's coming tomorrow morning. Again, it's dead calm now. I think it's dead calm before storm. Now, each each one of these lines from the last storm had something attached to it. One had part of the mat attached to it. One had the oh, by the way, this piece of steel walked walked its way off the barge down there, and then three feet further, so it walked six feet in the storm. Yeah. Anyway. Those ropes each had something attached to it, either a buoy, a buffer, this piece of steel, something. And now, as you can see, it's nothing more than a bunch of snot. And that's my next project, to unsnot this clean. Because the Coast Guard, they're very helpful. But a tiny ship is a good ship. Yeah. These, all these lines are $5 a foot, or more, some of them. That's braided one-inch line. And you can see, it's braided all right. Looks like somebody designed it. I'm going to put that around the bar in my living room if I ever get back from dry land. My muffler? Ah! Storm damage. Can't even begin to tell you what kind of waves were hitting this. I could. It polished the motors. Stephen, if you ever get to see this tape, remember all that stuff that was underneath that grill? Well, it is all gone. You know how come it's all gone? Because waves washed over the back of the barge and hit here and knocked it all out. My battery box has been reinstalled three times as of the uh, day before yesterday. All of this... Oh, oh you, this is real interesting, folks. The waves keep washing over the stern of my deck and going into my hatches. Then I have to go down into the hatch, that hatch there, and another one on the other side, and bail it out. And that is a pain in the butt, especially in the middle of a storm. Otherwise, the barge sinks. Not sinks, but goes down below the water level. Then the waves come over twice as fast, it makes it even harder to bail out. So this wood here, this wood, this is a barricade, 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 steel wood barricade, plywood battery box barricade, rubber barricade, steel barricade, and rope barricade. On the other side of the rope, we have more rope barricade, then 3x10 tongue and groove lumber, plywood barricade, rope, rubber, and miscellaneous stuff barricade on this side. On this side, we have 12x12 12 12 battery barricade. Battery barricade! We have the battery, we have a battery of batteries barricading that hatch right there. This is fun. And on the other side of the battery barricade, we have what's left of my, my work table, Thank God I didn't throw that out. That, that piece of steel, wherever that came from, that stops a lot of water, folks. Might not, that might not look like much of a piece of steel, but that's a, that's a water-stopping piece of steel if ever there was one. And that plywood, don't put any, don't put any less faith in that piece of plywood. That's a water-stopping piece of plywood if ever there was one. This pipe stops a lot of water. Now let's get a look at it from the front end. This could be, this is just a piece of plywood on the deck, but this could be. You could be looking at the next barricade, folks. You never know what it's going to be tomorrow. You only know what it was today. See, that's my barricade. Pipe, hose, gang box. Oh, the sun's coming out. That's wonderful. Let's see. Ah! And look who it is! It's Mr. Open Water Marker. Yes, visibility is now one half of a mile. For the first time in two days! I like it! Let's get back to the barricade. That means I'll be able to leave here soon, maybe. I think even the wind is blowing in my direction. Let's see, there's the pilot house. What's left of it? That's where I lived uh, for a month, three months. Barricade. barricade. Rope, rope is just in case you have to tie something off in the middle or something. That's what's holding the crane down. You might not think that that's holding the crane down, but in the storm the other day, the crane was trying to roll itself back into the pilot house and smash the motors. But this, and another one on the other side, and another third one on the side after that, was holding you back. Yes, that's, this has become me. And to look at me, you might not want to do this, but... Where's the sun? The sun's gone. That's me. Yup, that's me. I ain't looking like much. Haven't had a bath <laughs> except for a sea bath three nights ago, and that was cold. I don't really feel like doing that again. Haven't had a bath in, um, ah, uh, ten days now. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a day in the life on Barge Dragon on the Pemlico Sound. I think I need to get a bigger camera.